Hi, grab yourself a cup of coffee, put your feet up and enjoy. You're watching The Craft Show. Thank you again for joining us here at The Craft Show. It's been a while, but here we are, we're back again at our new home, of course, The Craft Outlet at Springfields in Spalding. Now, we have some fantastic guests lined up for you for the next few shows, as always. But don't forget, The Craft Show is not available on your telly box. Instead, what you need to do is to tune in, watch us on social media, you can grab us on Facebook, you can look on Instagram, you can, of course, join us as well on YouTube. And don't forget to check out the new website, the Craft Show Hub. .co.uk and on there you can see all the crafty makes you can join in we have the craft categories on there too and even better you can join the craft show club what does that mean it means lots of interaction it means discounts it means downloads it means everything is going on and it's the ideal place of course to promote you and your craft your workshops and everything else that you want to do but we're not here to talk about that today we're here to show you some crafty demonstrations. And of course, our first guest today is Paul. Paul, how are we doing? Are we allowed to shake? We can, let's get done. We'll sanitize later. <laughs> yes. We'll sanitize later. So Paul, thank you for joining us here on The Craft Show, of course. Uh, for anybody that's not seen you before, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Well, I've, uh, I've been working as a demonstrator for a long, long time, 20 years. Wow. 20 years. Time flies. Uh, I'm now retired, but you wouldn't think I was retired. <laughs> I don't think I'm retired, but I'm supposed to be. Yeah. So, um, really, I've been painting most of my life. Before those, I was a railway engineer, but that's in another life. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you've got a very crafty background, you've done a lot of demonstrating. Yeah. What else have you done? Well, exhibitions? Think, oh, and... yes, lots of exhibitions. I've mm -hmm. got an exhibition on next year okay which um so 2021 yeah 20 may next year may in, next year okay. i come from boston mm -hmm. and uh i've got an exhibition there uh next may okay. hopefully yes because of course it's the theater right okay and as you know the theaters are not yet open yeah so we're hoping that it will be open next may in yep. time for this exhibition fingers crossed fingers crossed yeah absolutely brilliant and i've just brought a couple of examples of mm -hmm. what so what have you got? Tell us a bit, because I know you've got you've got um, uh, the guitar here. That's amazing. You can pick that up and play it now, if yes. you can play a guitar, which I can't. But that looks absolutely amazing. And this one, this is the one that really catches my eye, though. It's Jimmy. It's my old mate, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy. Who? Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Yes. So, what's the technique to to painting something like this? Well, this is what we're here for today. Mm -hmm. We're here to find out how to start off with acrylic. The pitfalls, the things where everybody makes so many basic mistakes. Yes. So if you're going to start off using acrylic, mm -hmm. don't let so many basic mistakes. No. So we're going to avoid the pitfalls today. Absolutely. And you're going to show us how to we do are. that. We yeah. Brilliant. So what we're going to need to, uh, to do the demonstration so, today. Right. Now, to begin with, we've got, this is what we call a stay wet palette. Okay. A stay wet palette could be made out of a box like this. Mm -hmm. This is my mother's uh, Tupperware. <laughs> Used to keep the jam tarts in it. <laughs> and uh, so what we've got inside, let's have a look. Mm -hmm. Just put that down. Yeah. Now what we have inside, this is, this is very important. Mm -hmm. As people that uh, have used acrylic know how quickly it dries. Mm -hmm. Very quickly indeed. Mm -hmm. So how do we get around the problem of it drying immediately? Mm. So because with oil paint, you put it out on a big palette, okay, and it'll stay usable for days. Yes, and that's acrylic, what you old, see old Leonardo da Vinci yeah, with right. his yeah, palette yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So you, you, for days, you could use it. Yeah. Acrylic, you've got ten minutes. Right. So yeah. how do we get around the ten minutes? Mm. How do we get around the problem? Good question. So what we're going to use is what we call a stay wet palette. Okay. 
You can buy these commercially, okay. but you can make your own using this Tupperware box mm -hmm. or any box of yeah. this type. You can have them twice the size if you want. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But it's what we've got inside it that's important. Okay. Now, when we look inside, what have we got? So we've got this is capillary matting. Mm -hmm. Capillary matting you get from the garden centre. Okay. Where they have a lot of pots and etc. And they stand it on it and they water the water the uh, plants through mm -hmm. the capillary matting. Mm -hmm. That's what they tell me. <laughs> so that's how we start off with a piece mm -hmm. of capillary matting. Some people use blotting paper. Okay. But the problem with that is that blotting paper gets wet immediately. This, yeah. it's wet underneath mm -hmm. and it's dry on top. Right, so it kind of separates. It keep, yes. keeps one side dry. So the idea is to keep it damp inside yes. the box. Yes. But, but when we <clears throat> work on it, so what we what we need now mm -hmm. is a piece of tracing paper. Okay. Yeah. And we're going to put the paint on the top. So we, so what? First of all, let's show you about getting the water inside. So okay. We've got this um, this water container, quite yep. a large water container. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So we put a small amount of water in. Mm -hmm. Well, that is just a very small very amount. Very small amount, yeah. yeah. Make sure it's all level before mm -hmm. you... And then you drop the capillary matting inside. Okay. Now, if you get it too much water on one side, it will seep through. Of course. So it wants to be on something flat. You've just got it? to get the right amount. Yeah. So we put that in there like that. Yeah. Now, how do you know if you've got too much water in or not? Well, that's a good question. I want to know. Well, what you do... So this is the tracing paper. Yeah. Where we're going to put the the paint. Mm -hmm. So we lay that on. Yeah. If you've overloaded with water, mm -hmm. if I press on there, mm -hmm. the water will seep through. Right. So you've overloaded it. It's a good test. So you would actually have to take that out and wring the capillary matting out. Yes. So you press on there. Mm -hmm. There are little tiny little bits of, of water coming through because I'm mm -hmm. pressing on really hard. Yeah. And then we put the paint into the into the stay wet palette. Okay. So that's the stay wet palette. Yeah. You've got to have one. If yes. you try and do it like you would an oil paint, it'll just dry. Right. And right. also the paint will skin over and you'll have little bits of skin skinning over. Yeah. Bits like all in thick your custard. Paint. Yes. Yeah, and we don't want that. No, major we don't want that. The These are yeah. all major pitfalls that yes. we can all fall into. Yes. If you start off like this, yes. you won't. You won't get any pitfalls. Paul, let me ask you a question. You've mentioned a couple of times there uh, about oil painting yes. and how that's very different. What's the difference in terms of, as an artist, using oil against acrylic? What are right. the benefits I'm to using acrylic? Please you ask that question. It's a good question because a lot of people ask this question. When I'm teaching, because I run art classes, okay. the most difficult people to teach to use acrylic yes. are oil painters. Right. Why? Because it, the, the techniques required for oil painting mm -hmm. are totally different. Right, right. Totally. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to be looking how... So if you're an oil painter out there, watch. Yeah, pay attention. <laughs> yes. Well, that's it, because it's very different. Very, very different indeed. And right. the whole thing is all about how to s prevent this drying time or yeah. how to go with the drying time yes. to get the effects that we need. Okay, good. Okay, so what's the next step? So the next step, let's have a look at this. Now, I call, you'll see watercolour people, they have a little tiny jar. Yes. And they put it in, I call them the tinkle tinkle jar. Right. <laughs> the tinkle tinkle jar, we don't want tinkle tinkle no. jar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right, so the idea of this is, is one downside, let's go for these pitfalls for a start. Mm -hmm. Major pitfall is you don't wash your brushes out properly. Mm -hmm. You go back to the brush, Yeah. it's solid. Right. It's, you've lost your brush. Because it's drying so, it's yeah. drying in and 10 minutes. And you've lost your brush, you, you yeah. can't, you'll never can't get it back. That. No, no, you can't recover it. No. So, the idea is, that although I haven't got quite enough water, I probably have more than this. Yeah. So when you wash your brushes out, you put the brush into the bottom mm -hmm. and it right. then removes all the acrylic out of the brush. So you're almost scrubbing the bottom yeah, and, and that is separating the, the bristles. also the water pressure. Right. right. I mean, at home I have a bucket, a large bucket, right. it's on the floor. Right. And I might even use a, the, 
the bigger the container, the more water pressure you've got, right. the more easier it is to get the paint out the brush. Okay, that's interesting. I would never have if thought that. If you don't yeah. do that, you're gonna end, end, you're gonna end up with brushes that you can't use anymore. No. Okay. Good. So remember, large water container. Yeah. That's the main thing. Okay. And then when you wash your brush out, mm -hmm. have a look at the bottom. You should see it all coming out at the bottom and work it well. Yes. Squeeze it like that. Yeah. And then you can lay it down. Yes. Okay. Right. Now, when we lay it down, should we lay it on anything? No, it doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, I don't normally have a cloth that I just yeah either that or throw it on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you very often see this. Okay. You very often see an oil painter will have three brushes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in his hand. Yes. And then be selecting. Okay. Can't do that because right. you've got. To, while they're out like that, it's you've drying. got to use them. Yes. So only use one colour at a time on the brush That's because right. if you've got the others, they're going to dry solid. So just quickly now, okay. we've got everything set up ready yeah. to start. Yeah. I'm going to squeeze some paint into here. Okay. And then we have to put the lid on. Okay. Right. Let's let's, let's have a go. So let's put some. Yeah. Squeeze some paint in. We're going to put some ultramarine blue in. Some nice uh, turquoise. Mm -hmm. We're going to be doing a seascape, by the way. Okay. A nice simple seascape. Yeah. So we've got another blue here. A nice cobalt blue for the sky. Mm -hmm. we'll put that there. I'll we'll put a bit more in. And we also need some white. Okay. So the paints that you've got here, are there, like many things, different qualities ah, of those acrylic good, paints? Good question. Now, when you're buying your acrylic paint, mm -hmm. avoid the cheapest. Okay. Please avoid the cheapest. Yeah. The very best can be 10, 12 pounds a tube. Right. This, this, this paint is about a fiver. Okay. So is that middle of the road? Mid-range, don't go for really cheap stuff. You will regret it. Okay. Believe me, you will regret <laughs> it. So the, the good guide is around a five. Okay. If you want to get really clever, you can go up to 10 and 12 pounds if you want. <laughs> There's no point. So I'm going to put the lid on here to show you that this is how we're going to stop the paints from drying out because suddenly now I might want to go the toilet or for a cup of tea or yeah. I want a break yes that's a good point don't so what we're going to do is put the lid put on the lid on why are we not using it even if it's only for five minutes two minutes well, that's well do you yeah. know what your timing Paul, couldn't have been any better oh, no. <laughs> it's almost like that was intentional <laughs> absolutely perfect I fancy a crafty bro, do you? <laughs> yes, most certainly. He was hinting at that, wasn't he? He was yeah, hinting yeah, yeah, at having yeah, yeah. a quick break. <laughs> so I'll tell you what we'll do. So we'll leave the lid on, yeah, ready for when we come back. Yes. We're going to get a quick crafty bro, and when we come back, we're ready to crack on ready and do to some paint painting. Pitch. Fantastic. Well, in that case, we're going to see you after we've had a quick cup of tea. We are. We'll see you after this. it's Chloe from Chloe's Creative Cards and Stamps by Chloe. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video tutorial because I'm always getting asked how I tie my bows for my projects. So this one here is a triple bow and I've used some wired ribbon for this. So I've got a few different types of ribbons so I can show you a few different types of bows. So we'll get started. So what I tend to do is I tie all of my ribbons on my fingers. So to do this what I do is I start with my ribbon and this is a this is like a wired ribbon that I'm using for the first bow here so that means it really holds its shape quite nicely I like tying bows with wired ribbon to be honest I think it works really well so what we're going to do is we're going to start by hanging the ribbon over your index finger like so okay so it's kind of wrapped around there what we're then going to do is take the ribbon and wrap it around our third finger so it's like a full loop okay and then we're bringing it back to the back we're then going to wrap it back around the first finger back around the third Back around the first and back around the third and I'm missing my middle finger out each time there. I'm then going to take the longer length of ribbon, cross it over the back so it's crossing all of these layers here. We're going to take the shorter length and wrap it all the way around like so. So there we go. If I just move my finger out of the way there you might be able to see it's a little bit 
awkward doing this here so can you see how we've got the ribbon covering those pieces there so what we'll then do is tie a knot at the back like so and that would then be a completed triple bow so your bows are very much determined by how many loops you have on each finger so if you just have two loops on each finger that'll be a double bow if you have three it'll be a triple bow and what I like to do with some of the um, narrower ribbons as well is I quite like to put, do quite a few loops so you end up with quite a large bow and then you can pop some of your flowers in the middle and, and things like that and what I do like to do to complete my bows and I do this with pretty much all of my projects is we have some fabulous bling stones on our website chloescreativecards.co.uk and what I do is I just pop a little bling stone into the middle and then you can see how that just hides the knot of the bow there so that's the first type of bow that's using some wired ribbon I thought I'd show you some using an organza ribbon as well because this is a slightly more I find this one a little bit more tricky to tie so again it's exactly the same principle you're always going to start by hanging the ribbon around your index finger and how long you want the ends to be is very much determined by how much how long you leave this length so if you want it quite short you can shorten this length if you want it quite long you can keep this a little bit longer so what I then do is wrap it around my third finger wrap it around my first finger my third finger and then we'll go once more for a double bow a uh, triple bow sorry so we've got three loops on either finger there we're then going to turn it round take the shorter length of ribbon wrap it all the way around and then just tie a knot at the back there we go and you can then see how beautiful that's then going to look on your project so a really quick and easy way to tie a bow again and um, I've then got a slightly more sheer ribbon as well so this is we've got some really beautiful ribbons on the website actually at the moment and this is a gorgeous one so what we can do is take this I'm just going to do a double bow with this one this one's probably a little bit harder for you to see on my fingers because it is really see-through so I've got one loop on here one loop on my third finger do one more each side take it round grab the shorter length wrap it all the way around and then we're just going to tie a knot at the back and that would then create your lovely little bow ready to go onto your card so then of course you can just trim the ends off to however you would like to create these for your cards so that's super super easy to do and hopefully that's given you some ideas for your projects thank you bye Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that craft show quickie. Um, now, in the studio, I've been jo joined by Paul Howard. I can't hear your teeth in. Paul Howard, let's try again. And your teachings about the pitfalls of starting to acrylic paint. Well, and we um, need to get cracking because they dry out quickly, don't they? Oh, well, no, 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 they don't. So we've put the lid on. Mm -hmm. So you take the lid off. Yeah. And of course, the paints on are They're still, still good. as good. Yeah. But they would last well over a week. As well, long as they're in that as long as that lid's on the top yeah you can come back in a few days time and yeah. carry on exactly where you left wow it. the the paint will have not deteriorated it will not diluted which yes. is more important yeah no problem so that bit of water in there has made all the difference yeah with all that. the yeah. time perfect so what are we going to be painting all oh, right so let's uh, let's put the uh, stay wet palace at the side okay i'll put the lid down out the way fantastic now when you have a look at this we're going to paint a seascape okay so you can see this little bit of tape I've got across there. Mm -hmm. Well, that's for the horizon. Okay. Because try and paint a straight line. <laughs> you like this, try and paint it. <laughs> and is so, that any sort of special tape? No, well, it is, it's uh, masking tape. Oh, okay. Masking tape. Yeah. So that's going to give me the horizon. Mm -hmm. We've also got this hairdryer, which, I'm, which will move the demonstration on. But yeah. of course, if you wanted to use a hairdryer while you're painting, because I always do, mm -hmm. to get it dry yeah. and move on to the next stage. Fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. So what I'm going to do first is I've got a nice wide flat brush. Mm -hmm. I'll just bring that water in a bit closer. Okay. I'll put. I'll leave the uh, palette at the side like that. So, right now, what you'll find that when you try and put acrylic on a canvas, mm -hmm. as soon as you start to spread it, mm -hmm. it's going to dry out. Okay. How do we stop that? Because we could start off on one side and by yeah. the time we've got trying to get it to fit with or match up with what we've already done, yeah. this is dry, right. this is wet, you're trying yeah. to get wet. So very, very <laughs> simple. Okay. You wet the canvas first. Ah. 
You wet the canvas first, yep. and then you apply the paint to the wet canvas. I see. Couldn't be easier. And is that sort of any special canvas? Are they just sort of readily available well, these, anywhere? Well, these, these are mid-range canvases. These mm -hmm. are box canvases. You can mm -hmm. see the size of it. Yeah. These are quite nice canvases. If you buy a cheap canvas, well, they're just these are just that bit better. Yes. Uh, if you've used not used canvases before, yeah. be aware, same story. Mm -hmm. If you buy a canvas, the, this, this one's about six pounds. Okay. Cheapo one would be around three. Yeah. It's, it's down to you. Okay. It's like all things, as you develop, you start buying better quality equipment. Of course, it's the same with everything, isn't it? Whatever yeah, you, so there what we're going to do now. Okay. I'm going to put some cobalt blue. Mm -hmm. Now watch how this spreads on this canvas. Mm -hmm. Wow, that would not do that if you hadn't if you had not wetted the canvas. Wow. Now another little pitfall that people fall into is stopping halfway like this. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. Right. You go straight off the canvas, both ends, right. like that. Look. What's the reason for that? The What's, reason for that is you get you? a lot of marks in the canvas. Ah. Right. So it goes all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Now, because we've got the canvas wet, we can now blend in another colour. Okay. You try doing that on, on a canvas that's not, <laughs> not wet. So I'm going to get some white, and I'm yeah. going to put, blend some of this white. Yes. And create a lighter sky at the bottom where it hits the horizon. Mm -hmm. And work that up, work that up, work that up. Look. We're going over the tape. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it in one direction. Okay. And while we've got a little bit of white on the brush, we'll put okay. a few clouds in. Oh, I understand. Like that. And wash the brush out. Important, wash the brush out. And remember the technique is getting it right to the bottom and, right and scrubbing the bottom. at the this bottom is almost. Very, very, very important. Yeah, yeah. If you're paying £25 for a brush, it's very important. Yeah, because so I'd be worried about damaging the brush. If I'd spent, spent a lot of money on a brush, I'd think, am so I going to damage it? With acrylic, you don't use expensive brushes. Yeah. You use cheap as you can get away with. Yes, yeah. Okay, all right, good so stuff. So then you don't mind about damaging no. or forgetting, forgetting to wash it out properly. Sure. So, right, what I'm going to do now is dry this. Okay. And then we'll do the sea. And you've got some texture there. A little bit of texture. Almost, again, that's something I associate with oil painting. Yeah, that's Is a bit right. of texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're getting that with the acrylic paint. Yeah, immediately. Right. Oh, my so hair's now, all dry now, Paul. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I can see <laughs> from here. So we take the tape off. Okay. Well, that gives, we'll just put that down there. Yeah, pop it down out, there. Well out of the way. Okay. And we'll get the horizon line dried, and then we can let the rest dry. Mm -hmm. So we'll get the horizon line dry. So by drying that, is that going to that's going to help to prevent any sort of bleed? Yeah, because I'm yes, that's right. I'm going to put the C in here, a different colour altogether. Yes. We're going to use a nice turquoise. Yes. Mixed with what we call ultramarine blue. Ah. Which produces a lovely, basically, it looks like the sea. Right. <laughs> Ultramarine, as in. So what I'm going to do now, this is, this is a little bit of skill required for this, to get a straight line with a flat brush. Right. Try and get a straight line with an ordinary brush, yes. round or, yes. you'll struggle. But this is a, like a nice chisel end. Yes. And we can get a nice, like that. That's a beautiful colour. It is, isn't it? And will that dry the same colour as you put it onto the canvas, or is there any colour change as not it dries? Not, not a great amount. So you can feel quite confident when you're doing that? Yeah. So I'm going to put a little bit of water on, on this. Mm -hmm. so there are reasons for not wetting it too much. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want it to break up. Can you see those little bits of white there? Yes. Well, we can leave them. Yes. Because that's the ocean yes right? little bits of white in the distance yes so now we can actually create just put a bit of 
a little bit in there. Look, you see how you get a flat, how you can just go on the edge, look and just... Yes. No, a little bit more. A little bit more water in there like that, look, mm -hmm. just to help to spread it. A bit more water. And now we'll put this, a lot of paint on the brush now. We've got mm -hmm. ultramarine blue mm -hmm. and the turquoise together to create a texture. Yes. And that's the texture we were talking about a minute ago that I'd associate with, with a yeah, wall painting. Yeah, that's right. Of Can you see how they look? Stands little, off the canvas. Them, them little bits of white there, we leave them. Fantastic. And then we get a little bit, bit, a little bit of white paint as well if we want to go berserk with it. We yeah. can do a look, look at that. Or we could just go. You like the sound effects? Don't I you? do. <laughs> I didn't think you got that with painting. You though. don't. I produce them, didn't no. you know? Yeah. <laughs> So we'll get this dry. We've got a little bit of bleed gone up into the top here, but because we've dried it, yeah. we've got a little mark on there. Yeah. But what we'll do with that one, we'll turn that into a little cloud. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so we'll get this dry, nicely, nicely textured, thick, heavy, Thick, heavy paint in the foreground, yep. but it's not thin at the back. Fantastic. So, Paul, we're rapidly running out of time. Just right. before we finish, yeah. can you tell us, where can we find out more about you? Where can we come and see more of your work? Or do you hold workshops? Or what? what how can we we see what you're doing? Well, I come here quite a lot. So the craft out there? Right? Yes. Yep. Okay. And, uh, I do have classes in Boston, of course, and okay. Sleaford. And where can we find out about those? Do you have sort of social media? or? Yes, normally. Uh, yeah. Because it's the same people I keep at for years, I yes. don't really try and get any more. No, I can't, no. Fill, yeah. I can't, can't fill, fill the, the spaces. Class. But what we'll do is we'll put up uh, the details of Paul's, uh, where you can contact Paul or see where he's uh, uh, got his workshops advertised and so on. And if you can squeeze in to one of the workshops, um, I'm sure Paul would love to have you. I'm just going to put a few clouds in the background. And then you could build this painting up, presumably, so you exactly. might leave it to dry. Wet on dry, wet on dry, wet on dry. Perfect. So you can put a boat on it or a lighthouse yeah, or build up that's the landscape. It. Once it's dry, it's yeah. wet on dry all the time. Right. That's why I dried that and immediately start going wet on dry, yeah. just putting a few distant clouds in. Yeah. Fantastic. Like wow. Fantastic, John. Well, there we have it. That must be the fastest sea landscape we've ever seen of in our course, lives. Of course. And what a fantastic job you've done as well. Absolutely amazing. Let's have a look at that at home. So we spin that round. We'll just turn that Great round. Great job. Wow, look at that. And the time that you've been able to produce that in is fantastic. Well, listen, again, until next time, Paul, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. And we'll see all of you again very soon. <laughs>